I guess, a press release or something that sort of oh, outlined. Yeah, sure. yeah sure. that 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 happened quite a bit after the last time you were here. So what exactly is it? How do you do what? What happens if someone ultimately does get a Neuralink installed? What will take place? Well, for version one of the device, it would be um, it, it basically it implanted in your skull. So, uh, <laughs> but it would be so, uh, flush with your skull. So you basically uh, take out a chunk of skull, replace, put the Neuralink device in there. Um, you you put the the electrode. You'd insert the electrode threads very carefully into the the brain, um, and uh, and then you you know stitch it up, and um, and you wouldn't even know that somebody has it. Um, and then it, and so then it, it it can interface basically anywhere in, anywhere in your brain. Um, so it could be something that uh, you know helps cure, say, uh, eyesight, like give you returns your eyesight even if you've like lost your optic nerve type of thing. Uh, could, really? Could, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hearing, obviously. Um, I mean, pretty much anything that w where that that it, it could, in principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain, um, and it, it could it could um, restore uh, limb functionality. So if you've got to uh, interface into the motor cortex and then an implant that's say uh, that's like a microcontroller. Uh, in, in your muscle groups, uh, you you could then create a sort of a neural shunt that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality, like they can walk around be normal. Whoa! Yeah. So maybe slightly it, better. Slightly better. Over time, yes. You mean with future iterations? Yeah. Like the you know six million dollar man. Although right. these days that would that doesn't That's seem like cheap. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six billion dollar man. Yeah. So the the hole would be small. How big would the hole be that you have to drill and then replace with this piece? It's only one hole. Well, um, yeah, the device we're working on right now is about it's about an inch in diameter, um, and your, your skull's pretty thick, by the way. So skulls are mine is for sure. <laughs> it might actually literally be. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you're a big if you're a big guy, your skull is fairly thick. Um, skulls like is like seven to fourteen millimeters. Mm. Um, so that's probably a couple of inches. A half inch, you know, <laughs> half inch thick skull ish. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah. So that that's a fair bit of like our our we got quite a coconut gun on mm. there. It's not it's not like some eggshell. Oh yeah, I believe you. Um, so the yeah, you basically implant the device. Uh, and so it would be like a one inch square, uh, or one inch in diameter. Yeah, like a so an inch circle, like a circular. Yeah, I think like a like a smartwatch or something oh. like that. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you take this one-inch diameter, like ice fishing, right? You ever go ice fishing? Uh, no, but I'd like to. It's great. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. So you basically take an auger and you, you drill yeah, you take, through the surface of the ice. Yeah. And you create a small hole and yep. you can dunk your line in there. So this is like that. You're ice fishing on the top of your skull and then you cork it. Yeah, and you replace that. Um, say one inch diameter piece of skull with the, this Neuralink device, um, and that has a battery and a, and a Bluetooth and an inductive charger, um, and then you and, and, no, and then you also got to insert the electrodes. Uh, so the electrodes are very carefully inserted uh, with, with our uh, with our, our robot that we developed. Uh, that's lo it's, you know very carefully putting in the electrodes and avoiding you know and any veins or arteries. Uh, so it's, it's, it's you know it doesn't create trauma. So through this one inch diameter yeah. device, electrodes be inserted and they will find their way like tiny to wires, basically tiny wires, tiny wires, and they'll find their way to specific areas of the brain to stimulate. No, you literally put them where where they're supposed to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should insert. How the, long will these wires be? Uh, I mean, they usually go in like you know, depending on where it is, like you know. Two or three millimeters. So they just find the spots. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then, um, that, yeah, and then you you put the device in, and that that gets uh, that that replaces the the little piece of skull that was taken out. Uh, and then you, you you stitch up the the hole, and and, um, and you just have a little, like a little scar. 
and that's it. Will and this then, be replaceable or reversible? Yes. Like if someone can't take it anymore? Yeah, yeah, can, I'm too take, smart. I can't take it. Yeah, you can totally take it out. And what is the, besides re, re, restoring limb function and eyesight and hearing, which are all amazing, is there, are there any cognitive benefits that you anticipate from something like this? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could for sure, um, uh, I mean, basically, it, it, it's a generalized um, sort of uh, thing for, for fixing any kind of brain injury in, in, in principle, like if you, or if you've got like, like severe epilepsy or something like that, it could, it could, just, it could just sort of stop the epilepsy from occurring. Like it could detect it in real time and then fire a, a counter pulse and stop the epilepsy. Um, if, um, I mean, there's, there's a whole range of brain injuries. Like people, if somebody gets a stroke, they could lose the ability to speak. Um, the, that that also that could also be f fixed. So if you've got like stroke damage, or if you, you lose, say, you know, muscle control over part of your face or something like that. I think. It, it, and then when when you, when you get old, you tend to, uh, if you get like, you know, uh, Alzheimer's or something like that, then you lose memory, and th this could help you with, re you know, restoring your memory, that kind of thing. Restoring memory and what what is happening that's allowing it to do that? Like the wires, these these small wires, yeah. are stimulating these areas of the brain, and then is it that the areas of the brain are they're they're losing some sort of electrical force? Like what it, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's like it's like the thing of it's like a bunch of circuits, and there's some like circuits that are broken, and we can like uh, f fix those circuits. A substitute for those circuits, and so a specific frequency will go through this. Yeah, just a specific in that. Would is the process figuring out how much or how little has to mm -hmm. be, how how much these areas of the brain have to be juiced up? Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of work to do. So when I say, you know, we've got a shot at probably putting it in in, in a person in. You know, a, a, within a, a year, I think that that's a, that's what that's exactly what I mean. I think we have a chance of putting in put in someone and having them having them be healthy and and restoring some functionality that they've they've lost. The fear is that eventually you're gonna have to cut the whole top of someone's head off and put a new top sure. with a whole bunch of wires if you want to get you know the real turbocharged version, the P100D <laughs> of of brain stimulation I mean ultimately if you if you want to go with full AI symbiosis you'll probably want to do something like that symbiosis is a scary word when it comes to AI it's optional <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so yeah it's just I mean once you enjoy mm 